what a wonderful experience to be able to be chatting with the children of the Lord again. You know, I think personally we are in very exciting times and you might be saying, well, that's kind of a contradiction to what is happening at the moment worldwide. You know, when you switch on telly or uh, look at the news or whatever it might be, it's all so negative. But you know, it's all to do with attitude. And last couple of weeks we've actually spoken about exactly that, our attitude. And I want to absolutely encourage you, become who God has called you to come become. He has actually said that you are purposefully made. In other words, God has a plan for you and a plan to be fulfilled. That is Father's heart. My name is Leon Els and uh, if you want to make contact with us, you're more than welcome to do so. M59.com is our website. Uh, M number five, N-I-N-E dot com. But before we get started in terms of what I believe that the Lord wants to share with us for today let's just ask his blessing upon it father we just come to you in excitement to be able to receive that which your holy spirit is going to open up to us and i pray lord that the seed that's sown will be falling into good ground from where it will grow and produce a harvest lord that is even beyond our understanding i thank you for it in the wonderful name of our lord and our savior praise his name now, you know, if I were to give a title to what I want to discuss with you today, I would certainly say, are you still wearing the early you shoe? Early you shoe. In other words, those baby shoes that you were born with and that you are in your natural man. God has given us an opportunity to say, listen, I've got new things for you. Uh, allow me to just tell you a story of a, a, a guy that I knew many years ago uh, by the name of Johnny. Uh, Johnny as a young boy had made the mistake of trying to uh, to get onto a horse by pulling at its tail and uh, of course it kicked back and, and Johnny then had to eventually to have his leg amputated. But you know as a young man it could have easily hindered him. But I've learned a lesson from him uh, Johnny decided that he's going to make the best of where he is, not thinking about where he could have been had he had two legs. You know, when, when I used to go running, uh, Johnny would come with me with the crutches and he would just run a little ways with me, and uh, not all the way, and then I'll turn around, come back, and we catch up again. But he was willing to do this kind of exercise. He was always one of the wrestle uh, wrestling champions in a uh, not a disabled section but the able section uh, which was tremendous he just started to do things in a different way um, he went on a bike trip on his own with just the one leg as well uh, there were so many things that Johnny did that absolutely touched me that showed me that it is all in the attitude and once we begin to let go of the past that we come into what the future holds and what the present holds for us, uh, we can change so much. So the question is, are you still wearing the early you shoe? That comfortable shoes that you were born with or are we getting to a place where God can begin to use us? Could we read from the word of God then? Uh, I want to quote from 2 Corinthians 5. And verse 17 I'll be mentioning a few scriptures so I would suggest that you just go back and have a read to them allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you through his word listen to 2nd Corinthians 5 verse 17 it says therefore if anyone is united with the Messiah he is a new creation the old shoes are gone you've got a new pair of shoes the old has passed. Look what has come is flesh and new things have arrived. Listen again to this. Look what has come is fresh and new things have arrived. Now this is the promise in the word of God. The moment we make a decision to serve the Lord, to have him to be our Lord and our Savior, there's a change that takes place uh, uh, from within and even outward. It manifests to the out 
Listen again to what the scripture says. Therefore, if anyone is united with the Messiah, in other words, become part of the body, he is a new creation. So why do we still seem to be hanging on to the old things, trying to make sense of what has happened? What we are, what we are now. And the results of your life in the future will be determined by your decisions now. What do I do with now? And then the scripture goes on by saying this, the old have passed. Believe God for that. Look, what has come is fresh and new things have arrived. So here's the question. Have you allowed those new things to come? For those, that box with the new shoes, uh, a new creation, a new decision to, to walk differently than you used to walk. The one thing I know about getting shoes that are too small, it is absolutely uncomfortable. And I was always wondering why Christian seems to be so uncomfortable. Well, this kind of makes sense now. We're trying to walk in the old shoes while God has given us something new. We are a new creation and God has so many plans for us to come to fulfillment. You see, what we need to be do is to resist the temptation of wearing the early you shoe. You know, the enemy would want us to, to hold on to the past, to hold on to that security of, uh, I used to be there. While God is the one that wants us to come out and, and begin to trust in Him, have faith in Him, to, to be challenged into a new dimension of doing things. You see, the comfortable is not the best. Uh, it definitely isn't. It's when we get uncomfortable that we are stretched and that we begin to develop. To, to develop. Uh, you see, the, with all things, uh, when you learn to, to ride a bike, it would have been very uncomfortable for that moment. But once you commit yourself to it, it gets more comfortable and eventually it becomes second nature. And this is what God wants us to experience. When we come to Him, when we make a decision to have Him as our Savior, things around us begin to change. I am excited to see what God can do through men and women that are willing to say, Lord, I'm letting go. I want to come into a new phase of experiencing you, that the world will see that you are certainly alive. We want to manifest Him. We want to manifest the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through us. If that is your heart's desire, it is God's desire. What now will happen is whatever comes your way, God will just assist you and take you further. Listen, the first thing we need to know is we need to operate on a different level altogether. Uh, it is not good enough to operate in the old way of doing things. You see, the problem with old shoes is at some point you'll, you'll have to just uh, get rid of it and then you bare feet unless you've made a choice to serve the Lord you would not have those new shoes to continue to do things the way that God wants you to do it. You see, the old shoe is fear, leading into pride and, and all of those things. All the enemy wants you to do is a fear for the unknown. Uh, and, and actually, that's part and parcel of the flesh na nature. But when you trust in something and, and you've seen it work previously, that fear begins to subside. And this is exactly what we need to do. When we get into the Word of God, we see that God, what He's done for others, He certainly will be doing for us as well. But listen to the Word of God when He speaks to Joshua and this message in chapter 1 and verse 9. And this is for those that have made up their mind to serve the Lord. It's actually a commandment. Listen to what the Lord says. I've commanded you to be strong and brave. Don't ever be afraid or discouraged. I am the Lord, your God, and I will be there to help you wherever you go. I just love the way that scripture puts it. He says, be strong, and be brave. Courageous is one of the other translations. It is so important. Don't ever be afraid or discouraged. What is it to fear if we know that God is with us? And that is what we can hold on to. You look at your circumstances and your situation and you can't seem to the, see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's not a problem. God is the one that will bring us through the darkness even now into life. Uh, the message would have a different uh, slant to it. And, and let me read from the message. 
haven't I commanded you strength, courage, don't be timid. In other words, be fearful. Don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step you take. And I want to thank the Lord for that. That pure knowledge of knowing that it doesn't matter where I go, God is with us. When is He with you? When you invite Him into your life. When you begin to declare, I will not be uh, disobedient anymore. When the God in His Word says to Joshua, and this is a command. He says, I command you to be strong and to be brave. Don't let the situations around you dictate your attitude and, and, and bring you to a place where you try to get back in your baby shoes, the flesh shoes. We need to walk in, in the shoes that God has given us. Uh, those that are made for adults that are willing to, to be doing what God has called them to do. I want to encourage you. Let's get to that place of operating at a different level. Now, you know, the first thing that we need to do in order to, to get to that place, I'm just going to touch on three aspects that I believe uh, could encourage us for today, is of course to arm yourself with knowledge. There's nothing more important to get yourself into knowing what the Word of God says. Uh, you know, when, when I do the study on the spiritual armor, one of the main things there, the main elements of it, is certainly the sword of the Spirit. Now, it's a two-edged sword. It is when the Logos Word, the written Word of God, combines with the Rhema Word, the spoken Word of God, the two edges. And, and when I begin to speak the Word of God, it is like a sword that I'm swinging. And listen, when that happens, the enemy, the demons, and, and the enemy needs to stand back because of the power of the Word of God. The enemy also tried it by quoting scriptures to the Lord. But of course, this is the weaponry of the Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit empowers us through the Word, it becomes alive in us. It is within the context. It's the true Word of God. The enemy has to stand back from us. So the first way of going about these things is to build a knowledge. And how do I, what do I do with this knowledge? We need to nurture this new life that God has given us. You see, the old shoes makes to surrender to pressure. Uh, when the old things, when fear comes along, it makes us to surrender to that pressure. And all of a sudden we, we get anxious about the things that happen around us. But we need to keep on believing in God to make a way. That, that's what God has called us to, to uh, acknowledge, that He's the one that makes the way, not us. What He has done for others, He certainly will do for you. When you read through the scriptures and you see all the wonderful things that God has done, how can we not be excited about it? Why is it that we very often see it between the pages, uh, the covers of the Bible, and not see it materialize amongst us as His children? It is time that we wake up to the call of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God needs for you and I to touch the lives of other people. And I can only touch them if I'm brave, courageous. If I'm not afraid anymore to do according to the word of God. John 5 verse 24 says this. Tell you, I tell you for certain that everyone who hears my message. And this is important. Hears the message and has faith in the one who sent has eternal life will never be condemned. They have already gone from death to life. And listen, this promise of God when we come to Him is not just the life that we will eventually have in terms of the, uh, when all of this wind down. God's intention is that we will have that kind of encouragement, that life that is everlasting from the moment that we receive Him as our personal Savior. So why worry? Be happy, the song says. This is where we should be. We should be excited about it. And Paul and Silas certainly proved that to us. We need to get excited. He says, when we hear the message and we have faith in it, we are able to even now experience eternal life. The rule of God is already in our lives. Now, that's the first point there. So in other words, we need to nurture our new life. The second one is we need to operate in our new life. You know, it's no use having new shoes and it's in the cupboard. What we need to do is we need to wear it. We need to, to get into it. 
I, I remember uh, way back in the army, we were issued with these new boots. And man, was that a bad thing to wear in the beginning because boots for what it is uh, and being leather, uh, it was always been a problem in the beginning. And you seem to have a tough time, but we soon started wearing them out to the extent that it became part of your foot eventually mold it around you and uh, make it individually so and that made it so much better but it only came through us operating in them operating in this new life this shoe old shoes look to operate in the wisdom of man it, it very often when when we want to do things our way it's the wisdom of man but daily inquire after god's plan this is the desire that God wants to infuse in us through His Holy Spirit. We need to seek daily after God's guidance. You see, the one thing for certain is God do not want you to fly solo. He wants to encourage you. He wants to be the pilot through the Holy Spirit that guides us, that leads us, that directs us, that gives us uh, a, an opportunity to be achievers rather than just living a life. John 12 and verse 4, 24 says this, Yes, indeed, I tell you that unless a grain of wheat that falls to the ground dies, it stays just a grain. But if it dies, it produces a big harvest. And I think this is the message for us even today. God's intention is that we would let go of self, that we will get to that place of, of realizing that we have been called for much more than just living life for myself. God has called us to produce a harvest. Wouldn't you want to be in a place where you can with authority, that authority declare in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jesus, that people will be healed, that people will experience breakthrough in their life. Of course we want that to happen to our family and our friends. And you know, it is all about how our attitude is. Are we willing to begin to produce the fruit of a living God manifested in and through us so that others might see. This scripture very well says, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls and it dies, in other words, it's not about me anymore, it's about Him. And the moment I die for self, for that which is comfortable, let go of my early shoes, and I get to be in the shoes that God wants me to walk in, things begin to change around us. It is that moment that we die for ourselves in the sense that it is not my comfort anymore. There's a lot of things that we then begin to do, whether we like it or not, for the sake of others. That's exactly what needs happening. And the moment you begin to do that, God begins to bless us because we are coming into obedience to His voice. Man, we've got something to be excited about. We have a God that only has the best in mind for us. And the last point, how to function in this new life, uh, as we've said now, is very important. But God wants us to be in a place where He brings us to, uh, to be able to say, Lord, I know that when the seed falls in the ground, it will die and God will bring us into that victory. Now, if you function in the life uh, of this new life experience, things started changing. The old shoe measurements that we used to use, everything is in our ability. And, and this is a problem very often. People want to do things in our own ability. We want to achieve things in the way that I've been comfortable with and, and my plans need to materialize. But I want to encourage you with this. Let's develop an attitude that says with God, I can do uh, all things and nothing is impossible. When we look at the word of God in, in John 14 uh, verse 12, and he makes a statement. Yes, indeed. I tell you that whoever trusts in me will also do the works I do indeed. That's Jesus speaking. He says, if you trust in him, and this word trust can also be related uh, or translated to mean have faith in him. He will do greater ones because I'm going to the Father. 
And I've always thought early on in my Christian life, what does it mean to do greater things? I mean, Jesus has done all these things. Uh, dead is risen and, and, and lepers were healed, the blind saw and the deaf heard and, and those that have been held captive by demons have received, uh, they've been set free. What is a greater to do than that? But you know, when, when you read the word in context, God say, uh, Jesus says that, that when he goes, he's interceding for us. And we now, as part of his body, will be multiplied. And the, 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 uh, all these miracles will be multiplied by each one of us. Because we have an intercessor with God the Father. So I want to encourage you. We shouldn't be seeing less miracles. We should be seeing more miracles. I want to encourage you to know that God is, has no blue-eyed boys and girls in that sense. You have received everything and all you need to fulfill God's calling upon your life. Why would you look at others and say, well, Lord, they're more equipped than I am. God is not looking at your uh, how well you're equipped. He wants you to be just available. I tell you whether I have a blue or green or thick or thin hose pipe, it doesn't matter. As long as that pipe is clear and the water can flow through it, that's the important thing if I want to water my garden. And this is the way God works with us. There's a time when you just come to the Lord, you've got a fairly narrow hole that the water can flow through. But I tell you, the more you get the knowledge of the Lord, the bigger the dimension gets and the more the Holy Spirit can begin to flow through you. Never underestimate uh, how God has called you to be part of the body of Christ, to achieve, be an achiever. Now hold on to this, the scripture that we looked at in Joshua 1.9. Haven't I commanded you? Strength, courage. Don't be timid. Don't get discouraged. God, your God, is with you every step that you take. Are you encouraged? Well, listen, it's not a choice. God says, I command you to be having strength, be courage, having courage. Don't be afraid. Don't be timid. Don't be discouraged by all the things that happen around us that seems to be so negative. For God is with you every step. Now, if you don't get encouraged and excited about that, knowing that God, have your hand is in His hand. Nothing, I suppose, will encourage you. I want to close with this, maybe just this phrase, I can be more than what I am. I want to be more than what I am. And if that is your heart's desire, God will just bless you as you move into His purpose for your life. Let's pray. Father, we just want to thank you that we can be excited by the things that you've just told us that we can have a new lifestyle, that I don't need to be walking in baby shoes anymore, in the old shoes. You have new gear for me, that, and gear, Lord, that can make me or bring me to a place of a great harvest. I pray, Lord, for a harvest in the wonderful name of our Lord and our Savior. He named, His name, Yeshua. May the Lord bless you, may He keep you, may you be excited and encouraged.